Finally, we're back on the road. It's a big one as well. WBA featherweight title fight, Lee Wood versus Mauricio Lara. It's time to dance with the devil. Welcome to Nottingham, where we're gearing up for a mouth-watering featherweight showdown between Lee Wood and Mauricio Lara. A fight first scheduled for last September finally goes ahead this Saturday, and boy, we can't wait. Here we go. This is it. We've been waiting for this one. We have, haven't we, since September last year, Lee Wood versus Mauricio Lara. For now, I hate saying the real, because you always were the real champion in my eyes, but now, this is official, right? The WBA featherweight champion of the world. Does, does that make a difference to you mentally? Did you care? No, no not one bit. You know, you um, were the champion. Yeah, when I won it in the summer 21, I was champion. Um, you know, there's a lot of critics and um, people in the boxing world that were sort of, well, I can understand the, the thought because in other divisions, there's two champions and it's not it's not right. Yeah. I, I, I wish there was just one, one belt. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, the champion at the time had not boxed by nearly four years by the time he got sorted out. So. Yeah. Um, there you go, it sums it all up. But um, it's nice for it to be legitimate now and, um, and everything sorted. How are you feeling? What are we, a couple of days away now from the big one? How are you feeling? I feel good. Yeah. Um, you look good. I'm glad. I don't want to, I always keep saying this, everything for a reason, as George Ghost says. And, you know, I'm quite a French fan, but um, <laughs> everything for a reason. Um, you know, I've had a lot more time to prepare, prepare for this fight. Mm. At the time, we had six weeks. The scouting report, Lee had to do it, and he was like, get on to the drilling and how we operate. It's not a lot of time. Um, picked up that injury a few weeks from the fight. I was so much time to prepare. Um, I feel a lot more confident in the game plan, in, in the things I need to do in between, everything as a whole. I'm ready. How have you found getting ready for this fight? Because for you, you must have watched him on them pads yesterday and thought, listen, there's no time for playing around here. I know the studying's great, but you know what you've got to do when you get in that ring. Yeah, like you said, Ben is meticulous and Lee Wiley as well. They've been through hundreds of hours. That's not just exaggeration, hundreds of hours of footage of Laura to condense it down to me for my scouting report, to, to dumb it down, basically. Um, and I'm confident what I've got to do. Um, as for the pad yesterday, you know, um, I remember when Pacquiao boxed Mayweather and Pacquiao was on the bag. Bzz, bzz, and I remember saying to my friend, Mayweather's not standing in that yeah. bag, you know? Mm. So it's more to the eye than pad work. It's more to the eye than, yeah. than anything, you know? It's, it's down to the in-between work. Um, that makes sense to a lot of people, but there's more to boxing than throwing punches. And um, I'll show you on Saturday night. What is your strategy on? You I know you're not going to do it. I can, I can, I can tell you. I can tell you. First thing, what you know, ben, do? Uh, ben goes over a few things. It could be, we've gone over this, you know, um, it may get hesitant when I've caught him early. Yeah. You know, and I've got a set plan to deal with that. Okay. You know, I cannot afford to be uh, to be closing ground and rushing in myself. No. Without giving yes. too much away. And secondly, like the Kanzu fight, you know, don't get drunk on your own success. Yes. You start tagging him early, you get carried away, you think, oh, I can get him out of here. You can't be doing that because not only you get complacent and get caught, you've got a gas tank. Everyone's got a gas tank. I know he's got a gas tank and not many people's made him pay for being inefficient early. So if it goes to them later rounds, you know, I'll, I'll keep right in front of him the whole fight and make him work, not let him switch off mentally or physically, more importantly. No, quite, no, that, no more questions. What, so what, so what, so I want him to get off his feet, so I see, I see um, Rizzo Lara sitting down there. I want yeah. him to have a rest as well and get on but, his feet. But that's what, that's what I see. I do actually think he's going to walk into it early on. I think he's going to get caught. My only worry with someone like Mauricio Lara is we've heard the backstreet stories of, oh, he got dropped with a body shot, oh, he quit, he stayed down. We've heard all these, but... I want to know what happens when Lee does touch him because that's the only question I really need answered. Nadia and Lee's answered it for us, but ultimately, only he can answer that. Of course, the, the questions well, that we'll need we'll answered on Saturday night. The questions we need answering the most here are from Maurizio Lauren, not from Lee Wood, because he has answered all the questions. He showed against Michael Conlon when his back's against the wall, and there's one round to go. What he can do. We've been shown, you know, when he's down, when he's been beaten in the past, he comes back and he wants more. This guy's has got the questions left to answer, and we need to find out on and, Saturday and, night. And, Personality-wise, character-wise, you can't answer that. Every fighter's going to say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get back up. Yeah, when it gets towing, yeah, no. you, honestly, when it gets going, you know, that's when, when I get going. It's when you're in there. And it's not a choice. You either got it in you or yeah. you aren't. You're either a fight or you're a flight. I'm a fight and um, everything about me, even to the, to the point of picking these fights, you know, I'm a fighter. I, I want to fight. I want it to be hard. I want it to be in there and test me. I want to see other levels that I haven't shown yet because I know that it goes deeper than you've seen before. 
He's got to answer some questions as well. He deserves so I much credit for taking Honestly, this fight. I love the run. I love the run. Zhukan, Michael Condon, and Marissa Lara, you're a fighter. Mauricio, you've almost now become the boogeyman of the division. Do, do, you, do you understand that? Everyone seems to be running away from you. Lee Wood is running to you. Bueno, sabemos que le damos le damos el mérito por tomar la pelea conmigo, por darme esa oportunidad. Se la agradezco de verdad y bueno, soy un boxeador que le teme, pero pero bueno, trato de hacerles caricias para que no no le teman tanto a mí. So at first I have to say, I have to give him the credit, you know, for giving me the fight, for giving me the opportunity for that. I'm truly thankful. You know, and he may be scared of me, but maybe I'll just have to touch his face a little bit to calm him down. I, I don't have many words. I mean, this guy right here, his, his fists do the talking. I was just talking to Lee a minute ago, and I said, if I was advising you, I think you're crazy for taking the fight. But what I will say is, if he is to win on Saturday night, I believe he is the best featherweight in the world. I think actually the winner of this fight is the best featherweight in the world. I think it's that big of a fight. How do you rate Lee and what does he do well? No, pues la verdad sabemos que, que hizo bien por tomar la pelea. Como decimos, somos a lo mejor de peso pluma ahorita los que quedamos, que peguen duro. Y bueno, eh, como lo dijo aquí eh, mi gran amigo, este... Pues el que gane será el mejor de las 126 libras. Yeah, so I think it was, you know, a good decision to, to take this fight because I think we're the best that are left in the featherweight division. I think we hit hard and I, and I do believe that whoever wins this fight will be the best in the featherweight division. That's a very good point because obviously Navarati has gone up to super featherweight. Ray Vargas has gone up to super featherweight as well. So, so do you think Lee Wood is better than Josh Warrington who you fought previously? Eh, claro. Claro que sí, sabemos que Lingwood es más parado, es, hace un combate más limpio y, y se adapta a mi estilo para dar un gran espectáculo. Of course, I believe that I think Lee Wood is a clean fighter and he's able to adapt to my style to enable a great show, a great fight. You must have watched many hours of footage now of Lee Wood. Do you take anything from the fights with Michael Conlon? And looking back, how, how do you see this fight going? Como lo dicho, toda pelea es diferente. Cada rival es diferente, no. Fue una buena pelea, un buen espectáculo que dio con Colan. Pero como lo dicho, no se enfrentó a Bronco Lara y y veremos qué pasará este 18 de febrero con Bronco Lara. Yeah, as I say, as I said before in previous interviews, um, every fight is different. Every opponent is different. He puts on a really good show in his fight with Michael Conlon, but Michael Conlon is not Bronco Lara. So we'll see what happens when he faces Bronco Lara on September, on February the 18th, should I say. In your first fight against Josh Warrington, you fought behind closed doors. It was an empty arena. Your second fight, you fought in front of crazy fans. It will be the same fans on Saturday. Do you enjoy walking into a, a, cold, a, room. a cold room, a hot place like that, when the fans are going to be against you? Do you enjoy that? Eh, la verdad, eso me emociona, me motiva. Me prende, me pone la estamina hasta arriba, la verdad. Soy una persona que, que eso lo entiende, que eso lo motiva para dar un gran espectáculo al ver tanta gente para que... Bueno, tanta gente que pagó un boleto para ver un gran espectáculo, eso es lo que me motiva para pelear. So it, it, it makes me feel really emotional, it fires me up, it motivates me, it kind of almost re-energizes me to means that my stamina is, is, is at the maximum point it can be. You know, I'm a person that loves to do that, loves to go in there, and I love to go to a show where there's so many people there. They've all paid a ticket to come and see a show and to see a great show on Saturday night. What would it mean from where you've come from in Mexico, you've come a hard way to become a world champion? What would it mean for you, your family, your trainer, your friends, what would it mean? Lo máximo, ¿no? Es algo que he soñado y quiero darle esto a mi mamá, a mi papá, a mi hija Itana y a mi esposa Bárbara que se lo merecen, que han estado conmigo desde, desde abajo y bueno, llevarle este título del mundo a México es lo genial, para mí lo máximo. It would be the ultimate, it would be a, a, you know, a dream for me to be able to, to become world title, to, to, to be a world champion. It would be fantastic for my mother, my father, my daughter, Aitana, my wife, Barbara. You know, they've been with me from the very beginning. And to be able to take this victory home to Mexico would be absolutely fantastic. 
Should be a great night in boxing. Look, sometimes in boxing, you have to run to the fire. Uh, and Lee Wood is running to the fire against this man, Mauricio Lara, this Saturday, live on the zone, the WBA featherweight title. And I think the number one in the division status will be up for grabs as well. Should be a good one. First fight cut of the year here in the UK. We're in a special place as well, Nottingham. Lee Wood versus Mauricio Lara for the WBA featherweight title. Eddie Hearn joins myself and Tony Bellew. Uh, gents, before we start, we've obviously got some very bad news uh, last week, the passing of Ron Lewis, um, fantastic boxing journalist. He would have sort of reported on your fights from back in the day. Eddie, you would have watched him closely as well. A few words about Ron? Yeah, I mean, when I started in boxing, Ron was already well deep within boxing. Mm. And he used to scare me a little bit because yeah. he was the, the chief boxing writer for The Times, mm. which is obviously, you know, a very high profile, very respected news outlet. And he was always like, the thing what I got to know with Ron is, is he was always harsh, he was always firm, but he was always fair. In his reporting, he'd listen to you, he'd take your opinion. And also, he, people don't realize how much he championed young fighters, particularly yeah. out of GB. Like, he knew every amateur fighter, all their records. You know, he'd always follow them. In every, you know, he'd ask me about Anthony Joshua, and then he'd ask me randomly about how Gamal your fire's getting on, or something mm. like that, and what he's up to. But, you know, Ron was an old school reporter and there aren't many like him yeah. anymore you know very well respected always talked about his family and his kids and, and how proud he was of them and he'll be missed you know a, the day before his passing he was at the Anthony Joshua press he was right at the front you know he was he was doing his work and he was uh, very passionate about the sport of boxing always frustrated by the sport of boxing um, but you know really good man and you know I, I feel like it, it's only after someone's passing you get to see how well respected they were because yeah. you just listen to the whole boxing industry. And, and this was a guy that we saw week in, week out. Yeah, Tony? I've known him since the amateur days. He was at my ABA finals on multiple occasions. Just a lovely, lovely man, a diligent father, and just somebody who cared about the sport of boxing, but followed from the amateurs all the way through to the professionals. And as Eddie said before, you know, the, the senior right at the Times for boxing, and, and that's a big job. And it's a, you know, it's a. It's a lot of columns to fill, and he's filled them brilliantly over the years, he really has. And one of the most important things is always paying attention to the youth, the, the future of the sport of boxing. And as I said, just really gutted for him and his family, and we can we condolences and prayers go to them. You know, Ron, you'll be sorely missed, and you was brilliant at your job. Yeah, fantastic words from both. All right, we're here um, for the big one. Dancing with the devil mm. is what it's called. I, I asked Tony um, a couple of days ago, I'm like, why are they doing this fight again? Like, you know, September came and Lee Wood was injured. He's been elevated to full champion. He didn't need to do this. This is a voluntary. Why has he asked for Marissa Lara? You know, I think that coming off the back of the Michael Conlon fight, mm. like everybody felt, me included, that Lee Wood deserved a nice voluntary defense. <laughs> kind of like another homecoming. Yeah. Like just to say, look, you've just had the war of wars, right? Mm. Let's bank a few quid on an easy night, a little celebration. We'll have a big undercard. <laughs> and he was like, the first thing he said was, I don't really like easy defences because I think they're all tough yeah. right yeah. and he said and I don't think I'll, I'll perform as well in a fight like that so I said okay I think you should fight Kiko Martinez right this was even the back end of last year I said he's had a great fight with Josh Warrington mm -hmm. and even when this was rescheduled I said again because he just beat Jordan Gill what about Kiko Martinez and he said look I don't think Maurizio Lara is much more dangerous than Kiko Martinez. I said, okay, debatable. He said, but they're all dangerous. Debatable. That's a big fight. Mm. It's big money. I think I can beat him. Ben Davison sees something in Maurizio Lara, so does Lee Wood, that they believe they can beat him. Now they know how difficult the challenge is. Mm. But my God, when we were watching the open workout last night, it was like, it was like a shooting range. <laughs> you know, I mean, Maurizio Lara is coming here with absolute vengeance. The only thing I will say is there are still some unanswered questions about just how good Maurizio Lara is. When, when Lara headlined recently in Mexico City, mm. I was there. We spent a little bit of time from where he came from, mm. right? Mate, this is everything for him. Like, and also, when you go for a walk in Mexico City mm. on an incline of 0 0.5, you can't breathe after two minutes. These geezers are out doing two-hour runs in the, in the hills, in that's the mountains. That's just to get his off. You know? oh, and that's another thing that could be interesting in this fight. Yeah, it is I tight. know, I've been around every Maurizio Lara fight week. He's tight every it. fight is super tight at a weight. Mm. And he already looks tight at a weight. He looked tight at a weight yesterday. He looked bad when he but fought. By the way, Lee Wood looks massive. Yeah, you know, even that face-to-face uh, -face they did at the um, Do you know one thing ground? we're missing here is, is a lot of Mexican fighters, they're not, they, they don't perform in the gym. 
because they're, they're used to wars day in, day out. And that's why I think Maurizio Lara has been bypassed a little bit. He doesn't show great form in the gym. He's not someone, all fighters aren't calling this fella's a future world champion because I've seen him in the gym. He gets beat up, he sparred upon his doom. This fella turns up fight night. And I don't care what anyone says, that's all that matters. When the lights come on, how do you perform? And this fella is made for the lights. I'm telling you, he's a monster. I'm telling you now, he is, he is so right, underrated. Don't, don't, it's yeah, leave it, leave it, leave it, it out. Yeah. We're going to have to this one out. <laughs> oh, breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Wood's unwell. Woke up feeling unwell today. No, we just this fight. This is, this, is, this, is, this is Taylor Catcher all over again. <laughs> he's, he's no, no, no. no and he's no. told me he's weak to the body. It's just, I, I didn't see that because Josh Warrington hit him everywhere. And he weren't doing nothing. Bear in mind, Josh Warrington has beaten so many good people. Like top level fighters, and you can say the same thing. Look at me now. I'm, I feel like I'm Team Lee Wood now, but I think the Zhu Can and the Michael Condon wins Brilliant are wins. massive. But, but let's, and let's be totally let's honest. Let's not forget as well. In the, both of those wins, right at the end, he got the stoppages in both. The Michael, so you know he's there for the, the Michael distance. Condon victory, Addy. It's massive. I know he got hurt in the first round. I know. Hit. Yeah. Hit. Addy, he was he was getting his head boxed off, and he was he was suffering massively. I I just think. What Lee Wood's got going for him is he's got a huge heart. He knows what it's like to be bottom of the bill, fighting on nothing cards. He's been literally right through the whole of boxing as an underdog all his life. So it's good that he's here now because he understands what it means and what it took to get here. But ultimately on Saturday night, he's got the biggest fight of his whole entire life. And he's going to have to go through something, I believe, that he hasn't even shown himself yet. And one thing, he cannot take the shots that he took against no, Michael No, no chance. No chance. Fight. Not one of those. Not no, one of no, those. Exactly. Agreed. Uh, very quickly, um, before we wrap, as someone breaks their camera just behind yeah, us. That's a few um, quick comments. Lee Wood fan, he's just going to see the tiny billion. I fully understand if that's the case. So um, two of your, your, your superstars for the future are fighting on the undercard as well, Dalton Smith and Gary Cully. Mm. Quick word about them. Yeah, Dalton Smith, fantastic. I mean, yeah. look, people, when, when you're trying to win a Lonsdale belt, you have to look at domestic fighters and say, who is out there? Mm. English champion in Allington, watched him last night at the workout, looked really you know, yeah, decent, looked good, yeah. got good support as well, desperate to win. But unfortunately for him, He's fighting a fighter that, in my opinion, is already fringe world level. Mm. But a good fight, you know, he wants this fight. Sam Maxwell's on the undercard, the Commonwealth champion. If both guys get through on Saturday night, I think we're going to see Dalton Smith, Sam Maxwell, British and Commonwealth title for the belt to keep. Mm. Outrights for Dalton Smith. And Gary Cully, real, you know, surprise package. For years and years, people telling me about Gary Cully. This guy looks really exciting. Good opponent as well, coming off a big win. And if he wins, he'll be on the big Taylor Serrano card as well. So, you know, add that to Chev Clark as well in, yeah, in, a, in, a, in a decent fight. fight. Doofus is that's that's a, a tough, tough fight. 20 you know, wins, I mean, 17 yeah. by knockout. And also, just fought recently, Fen Long Meng. I thought he won that fight. And, you yeah. know, Fen Long Meng's a world title challenger. So a really good learning fight for Chev. Janaid Boston, uh, Aaron Bowen, look out for him making his pro debut as well. Yeah. Kieran Conway. Uh, of course, Sam Maxwell as well, and, and, and much more on the undercard to come. But really good night of boxing. But, you know, someone asked me earlier, they just said, what constitutes a big fight feeling? And it's just like the feeling in your stomach. Yeah. You know, like when you watch a head-to-head, -head, you know when we put that clip out yeah. at the start of the week with those two at the football that's ground? One, yeah. you, as that, a, you just watch that, it and you go, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. And that's what this fight is. I can't wait. All right, here's a reminder of what's coming your way on Saturday night. The main card begins with Gamalia Fire against Diego Alberto Ruiz. Chef Clark faces Israel Dufus. Gary Cully puts his O on the line against Wilfredo Flores. Another undefeated record is on the line when Dalton Smith takes on Billy Allington. Then the main event for the WBA World Featherweight title, it's Lee Wood versus Mauricio Lara. First fight cut of the year for Matchroom and Zone in the UK, and it's a good one as well. The WBA Featherweight title on the line, Lee Wood versus Mauricio Lara. Ooh, they're calling it Dancing with the Devil. Adi, I was watching it and I seen them arrive and come face to face for the first time in Nottingham Forest football ground. Mm. And I just sat there thinking, wow, this yeah. is literally, it's carnage. This yeah. fight cannot be anything but total carnage when they get in the ring against each other. I'm excited, I'm intrigued, and I'm curious to just exactly what is Lee Wood going to do mm. the first time that Itzio Lara puts his hands on him? Is he going to fight fire with fire? Of course he's going to. Or is he going to try and box? He's, he's going to fight fire with fire. We, we've seen it with Lee Wood, haven't we? With Michael Condon, with Zhu Can. <clears throat> Once you hit him, it's almost like a school, school, schoolyard bully. You hit him, he hits you back. That's what he does. We have to take into consideration here, though, he's a quite a large underdog. Mm. He is the champion, and he's the underdog here coming into this fight. 
The bookies have placed Maurizio Lada as way out there as the favourites in this fight. And Lee Wood's got it all to do. Yeah, I, I saw that. It's good that you say the odds, because I saw them and they were four to one for Lee Wood, the current champion yeah. in his backyard, to win at home. Four to one. I can't remember the last time I've seen that. Yeah, it's crazy. Honestly, it, it is crazy. Are you surprised they've taken this fight? Remember, this is a voluntary. This isn't a mandatory. He's now the full champion. He doesn't have to go to Mauricio Lara. Why have they done it? Well, when we've seen that, that first face-off coming face-to-face for the first time and, and Lee Wood says, where's the translator? He's not even looking. Where's the translator? Tell him I picked you. I yeah. picked you. And Maurizio Lara was like, I know you picked me mm. and I'm here now. And you're going to be so sorry you picked me. I am not your dream fight. I am your worst nightmare coming to life. This boy is just... I mean, he scares me a little bit, Addy. The way he yeah. speaks, the way yeah. his demeanour, the way he carries himself. He's, he's a killer with boxing gloves on. I do wonder, and it, look, you'll, you'll remember this. Me and you're around the same age. Mm. I do wonder if there's a bit of the Bradis Prescott, Amir Khan thing. Ooh. Remember when Bradis Prescott destroyed yeah. Amir Khan? He came back a couple of years later and fought Kevin Mitchell. And yeah. Kevin just outboxed him. And I do wonder maybe if we've read too much into Mauricio Lara. Is he this killer? Or was it just a really bad night in the office for Josh? Jorge Rubio's greatest error in boxing was picking Bradis Prescott. The worst. For the Mia Khan. I think that yeah. was his, his first appointment as, as a top-level coach. Was it. And that it was, was it. it was probably his last one as well. Yeah, he didn't get a job after. Yeah, yeah. That, that, was, uh, that was his P45 handed in immediately <laughs> as, as Amir hit the floor. But I, I, I get where you're going with this. The only thing I would say is Bradis Prescott looked a lot just a lot more clueless yeah. than Maurizio Lara, if I'm being totally okay. honest. When when Bradis Prescott lands that shot on the it happens so quick and it's over, so we don't really get to see anything. We've seen with Maurizio Lara, it's constant Good pressure. Uh, and we've seen him not, it, it's not happened, it's not been a one round blowout. Mm. I mean, he put it on Josh Warrington and put a sustained beating on him. Let's just not dress it up any other way. Josh Warrington had to show immense bottle that night and mm. so much heart he really did not. And I commend him for it because I've seen lesser fighters than, well, better fighters than Josh Warrington call it a day after what he went through with Maurizio Lara. But with Maurizio Lara, this guy has constant pressure, huge power, and, and just a, a rugged, pure determination, belief in himself. Mm. And I think Lee Wood, I understand why Lee Wood's taking the fight, even being totally honest. I understand why someone like Ben would look at the fight and Ben Davidson, the trainer, would say, I like this fight because they will think Maurizio Lara walks into everything and no one's ever going to walk through Lee Wood easily. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, this guy actually might. Yeah. And if you don't get Maurizio Lara's respect immediately, this is going to be a bad fight. Yeah, it's going to be... Look, it's going to be what we do know. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic atmosphere in the Nottingham Arena. We've seen it there. Michael Conlon versus Lee Wood, one of the best atmospheres I think mm. we've all experienced. And it will be that good on Saturday night. Co-main event's an interesting one. Dalton Smith defends his British uh, super lightweight title against English champion Billy Allenton. Mm. Obviously, so much expected of Dalton, but he wants to win the British title outright. You've got to get these victories. You have, and I understand why the fights like this have been made. It's to get that Lonsdale belt round his waist and yeah. keep it there permanently. But if anything, I'm not going to lie, it's a bit of a step backwards yeah. for someone like Don Smith, but I get why it's happening. He wants that British title for keeps, and this is the, the best way to get it. I think it's no, uh, it's no big brain box to say that we've got Sam Maxwell who's going to be on the verge I like of, the way you've done that. Two you know, plus two equals four. Yeah, you course, are correct. There we go. Yeah. I mean, I usually had two plus two and get 16, but, you know, <laughs> today, me, me thinking caps on and I'm doing it right. So, you know, it doesn't make any great shapes, but we'd like to see, I mean, that's a inching match of Sam Maxwell mm. and Dalton Smith providing both come through on Saturday night would be interesting and we want to watch but uh, Don Smith someone you know listen he's a precocious talent yeah he's, he's a very very good kid very good fighter uh, but he's, he's, he's just going to go in there and get the job done on Saturday nothing other than a stoppage within six rounds I'd be, I'd be totally honest Daddy. I mean, yeah, no, I, he's I, a level above this yeah and he would want to get that stoppage as well the last time out he fought on a, another broadcast let's just say that and went all the way so he's going to hope to get uh, the job done early uh, Gary Cully's on there as well Gary Cully um, you ask Eddie about your favourite fighters to watch out for in 2023 he always mentions Gary Cully yeah. massive uh, for the weight, lightweight division mm. just slick isn't he slick arrogant confident I like him I like him a lot good coach and Peter Taylor yeah uh, good shout yeah, he is. He's, he's strong. He's physical. He, I like the look of him, but once again, yet to be tested. Let's just hold our fire on him and let's see. I like the way he does this. I go crazy. <laughs> and Tony's like, one second, Eddie. Like, just pause. Can you pause, please? I, I just, I just want to... I like to see guys tested, yeah, you know, and 
and I say when these te and, and these tests will come. Mm. I, when I speak to these young fighters now, I'm always first saying to them, listen, enjoy your moment, embrace it, but understand if you can make a fight easy, make it easy. If you can get rid of a guy quick, get, get rid of a guy quickly, because the hard nights are coming. Mm. They're waiting for you. And when the nights get really hard, you'll thank yourself for making the quick nights go quickly. So Gary Cully, get the job done Saturday, but understand me that the stay in the test ahead and this game gets to a stage where it's pretty brutal at times. I like the card because it's almost, it's got like Eddie Hearn's favourites of fighters that are hopefully going to go on and do good things. We want to see that, right? Chef are you Clark, fighting on Nadi? Well, no, if you, you saw my little favorites. session with Derek James and AJ, you'll know that I'm certainly not <laughs> fighting. <laughs> Chef Clark's on the card as well, uh, currently 4-0, looking to step it up, I think, this year. Mm. He wants to stay busy. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Chef Clark can do. Yes, uh, Chev Chevon Clark is someone I've watched from afar and, and I watch him patiently. Israel Dufus is no mug. Mm. Uh, 20 wins, 17 of them wins by knockout. Uh, he does have eight defeats and he's been stopped. So he's someone who either knocks you out or gets knocked out, you know. Mm. But he's only been stopped by really top-level fighters mm. and, and fighters who are, you know, tip for superstar, yeah. to be honest. So it's something that I'm looking forward to watching. This could be one of those where the matchmaker runs after this is a really risky one remember it was supposed to be dex spellman yes. unfortunately didn't pass his medicals he's had to retire from this but we wish him good luck in the future yeah. this is one of those where chef would have said i want to stay on the card yeah. okay we've got one guy and he's Him. the only one yeah he's the only one do you want to stay on the card or not chef and that that's that's horrible i've been put in that position before i remember you know many many years ago many many years ago that i was meant to be fighting at the top of the bill in the echo arena uh, I was going to be against another cruiserweight, just a quick comeback fight, and then I think it was about 10 days to go, the opponent pulled out and he said, Tone, we can't get anyone but a heavyweight. And that heavyweight was a Vinka Bakarin. <laughs> what? Did you fight him? Did you do I, it? I fought yeah. him, and I remember I had the flu the yeah. week of the fight. I was on antibiotics. I took the fight, and I remember going in the first round, hitting him really hard with a shot, dropping him. If I remember correctly, he carries on, and then I was absolutely petrified the gassing, so carried him for nine rounds. In the 10th round, I opened up the jet, stopped him in the 10th. And then Dillian White boxed him a couple of months after and just blew him away in four rounds. But listen... There's, the, there's divisions for a reason. Yes, these, these fights need to happen, and mm. this will do Siobhan Clark and the late notice the world of good, but he must be careful going in here. The last thing he needs is a setback in this stage of his career. Yep. All right, look, we get going on Saturday. Remember, it is a big one as well. Lee Wood versus Mauricio Lara. Just a stone's throw away from us here in the Nottingham Arena. Before the bell kicks off, around 4 o'clock, Darren Barker, Chris Lloyd back in the hot seat. It should be good for them. And then 7 o'clock, it's the, the big team. Yes. The big team are back. Tony Bailey, myself, Laura Woods, Josh Warrington, all of us are there. Make sure you tune in this Saturday, live on The Zone, for a bit of Dancing with the Devil. The fight is off. Wood forced out through a bicep injury. Lee Woods just ducking him. He's scared, he's running scared. No, I don't pull out of fights, especially fights I've asked for. Marissa Lara has almost turned into the boogeyman of the division. No, you know what? Run it back. Run it back. You think I'm scared? Run it back. Ah! <laughs> I think this is going to be my best performance yet. I can't see reaching the halfway point. And I will win by knockout. Okay, my lemons, come on.